Hey guys, and welcome back to a new tutorial. Let's create today fan artwork for the new album by Charlie XCX. Grant. Not a fan? No problem. Change the stickers and the colors to create your own individual fan artwork. Today it's all about materials and lights. I show you how to create hyper, hyper. realistic materials with bump maps. We also today create the most complex material ever. Transparent colored plastic. In the end, we create in Photoshop customized stickers to create your individual fan artwork. Let's go! The 3D, the 3D objects. objects. Find the code in the video and get free project files. Good luck guys! All right, let's start with the tutorial. First, we delete the light, the cube and the camera with the X key. And now we change here in the axis cross to uh, X. And in the beginning, we start to model our cassette. And for this, I searched already an image in the internet. Drag and drop it here inside in the scene. And you also get the file on my Patreon for free. Link is in the caption. Now select the empty or the image and zero it out out that it's perfectly in the center of our scene and now we can start first we need a cube and here on the side we can rescale it like this when you are happy with the result go to minus z and here we also have to change it 0.3 is for me a good size and now we go here under the modifier tag and we need the bevel tool and here we only increase the segments by 50 that's it now we will create the second part here and for this make the cube invisible but rename it first to main and now we need again a second cube now we can start to rescale it again here on the side and also to bring it to the right position. Now we have to transform our cube and for this we need the simple deform and we go under taper and axis z and now we can change it and as you can see it's now bigger but we can fix it here again on the side. That looks good. Make the main object visible again and go to minus z to rescale it in this position again. So I would say we choose here 0.35 that it's a little bit bigger than the main object. Perfect. Now we select this object here and we rename it to second. And here we need also the bevel deformer. And here we also change only the segments to 50. Now make the main objects invisible again. And now we recreate everything what is a hole with a cylinder. And for this go here on the mesh, choose cylinder and use this window here. Rotate it by 90 degrees and here you can also rescale it and here you can also change the position to something like this and here rename it to main one so we will later on know that we have to create the hole in our main object now you can copy and paste it take the move tool bring it here to the side and also fix this holes here on the side now you can also copy and paste it again and you can rescale it here on this uh, on the side 0.4 and x and y looks good Make the main object visible again and look it up if it fits perfectly here. Because it's now a little bit smaller as the image because we bevel it, but it's not necessary in the end. And now you can copy and paste it and bring it also to the other edges. All right, now make the main object invisible again. And now we have to fix this five holes here. And now we can also copy and paste it and bring it to the right position. But here we have to rename it to second one. So we know we have to create a hole on this object later on so that we don't get confused. Now you can copy and paste it and bring it to the other positions too. Right, and for this holes we need a cube. Here you can change the size and here also the location. This location and this size looks good. Now rename it also to second cube. So it's also here and now you can copy and paste it. 
bring it to the side and make the second object visible again to see if it fits. And as you can see, the cubes are not visible because they are not long enough. Select both and now we can rescale it so it go out of our cassette. Perfect. Now make the second object invisible. Now we make the main object visible again. Select it and we need now the boolean tool. And now you can insert it here, the first hole, make it invisible. Now the hole is created. To make it a little bit faster, you can duplicate the boolean modifier here, delete the duplicated object and take the second one, make it invisible. So repeat it, duplicate, delete the object here and insert this one. And repeat it for all main objects here. Perfect. And now we have to create this holes here through this both object. So we also click here in the main object, boolean modifier, duplicate it, and also insert the second holes here, this five, but not make them invisible until now because we have to repeat it also on the other object. To get sure that you select all of them, you can see it here in this view. All five elements are in the boolean tool now inside of the main object. Now we can make the second object visible again, select it, and now we repeat it here with the boolean tool. So you can insert it here and duplicate it and repeat it. So when you're ready, you can now make all inserted elements invisible and you have everywhere the holes inside. Perfect. So in the next step, make this parts invisible and we will create this hole here. And for this, we need also a cube. Rescale it here on the side, change also the position. Here we also need the bevel modifier, increase it by 50 and here also change the value 0 0.01. That looks good. Go now to minus Z and bring it here to the side. All right, make the empty now invisible and make the main object visible again and also the second object to see if it, if it fits. So I think it's a little bit too big. So you can also rescale it here again to something like this. Go back to minus Z, select the cube here and we don't need such a big hole to so make it a little bit underlapping here. Now choose main and again a boolean modifier and insert the cube, make it invisible. Now you get this shape here on the cassette. Now you can copy and paste the cube, go to the other side, make a small interaction here, select the main body, a new boolean, and insert the cube. Now we have our effect cassette. In the next step, we apply all modifier. You have to click on this arrow button and apply it. Perfect. When you're ready, repeat it also for all modifier on the second object. Now select second and main, press with the right mouse button on it and join it. Now you can delete everything here that we already created because we don't need it. So, and now we have a clean scene with the perfect cassette that we created. In the next step, we will create our screws. We need, as you can think, cylinders rotated by 90 degrees. Go now to the side view like this and change the depth. That looks good. Go back to X and change also the radius and the position. So these are my values. That looks good. And now rename the layer to screw and we go now to the edit mode. Go to the area selection here and select only here the top and we need now the knife tool. Start to cut it something like this and when you're ready press enter. Now you can select this part and take the move tool and move it to the to inside and you can also rescale it. This is a little bit too big and bring it here also to the side to get the perfect result. Now it's centered. Now you go to the other side and you have to repeat it here also. Bring it a little bit inside and I forgot. Select again middle parts. Go here under extrude and choose extrude along normals and now bring it inside. 
like this. Now we have our perfect screw. Now you can take it and copy and paste it. But first you have to go to the object mode again. And now you can start. Make it more realistic. Rotate it also a little bit so that the screws are not showing all in the same direction. We need them also here in this area on the top. All right. And next step, we create the rings here inside. And for this, we need a torus. Rotate it here by 90 degrees. Rescale it here and bring it to the right position. And here you can also change the minor radius. It's important that it's a little bit inside and a little bit outside. That looks good. And here we have to change the segments to 14, like this. You have to rename it in rings. I don't know the right name for it, but now we can go in the edit mode, press here somewhere in the scene and hold alt to get the loop selection and shift and select every second segment. And now we need again the extrude and extrude along normals is the right one. And now we can extrude it inside to get this ring. Perfect. Now we go back to the object mode and now we can press shade smooth and we get this cool object here. Perfect. Now we can select it and copy and paste it and bring it also to the other side. All right. And for this project, it's also important what is inside and we need the tape here. So to work easier, we have to go here to the um, line, sl uh, line displaying. Now we need again a torus, rotate it by 90 degrees, bring it to the right position and change here the radius to a better value to something like this and now you can increase the segments that are not so necessary here we need only two or three the less one because we don't need it as a ring we need it as a flat object so those are my values All right now rename it <laughs> um, to tape ring and now we need the second object also so create the torus rotate it by 90 degrees but one have to be of course a little bit smaller like this this looks good go in the viewport shading too and yeah it fits perfect rename it here also to tapering too all right at the end we add some details select the main object go to z and go to the edit mode so in first we need this area selection select it and bring it a little bit down perfect and this is later on here our tape so for this all right and now take the knife tool and create here a cut, press enter, go now down and repeat it here, press enter. And now we have only this object here, select it and take separate, separate selection. So we have now this object here, this is our tape, rename it to tape. So now go back to the object mode and select tape and go in the edit mode. Now we have to rescale it a little bit and it goes here inside. Go back to the object mode and select the main object. Go back to the edit mode and now we select this one here. Press X and delete faces and repeat it on this side. Press X, delete faces. So now it looks like it goes here inside. In the last step we add the camera. Press on the camera icon, zoom out, and we go under this tag here, and I use 1080 by 1350 pixels. And now I change your Y to minus 90, that the cassette fits perfectly in our render region. So, and in the end, we add a plane as a background, rotate it here. By 90 degrees, go out of the camera view and look if it's behind our object. Now it's behind and now you can rescale it. That's it for the part. Do you want the whole project file? You can have it. <gasps> With over 70 other files that we have already created together, guys. You can find them on my Patreon. Link is in the caption. The materials. The materials. Now you can download all HDRI maps and textures for the material part. Go, go, go!
Download it. And let's move on with the tutorial. So, let's move on with the material part. First, we split our view in two and go here under Shader Editor. Go now in this window also to viewport shading number four. And now you see nothing because we don't have light inserted. But first we go also on the camera and we change to cycles. And here it's enough when we change the samples to 50 and we need also denoise because we work with transparent materials so we get a better result. So first we create our lightning in the world mode and here we search for an environment texture. Here we insert a HDRI map and today we use the Blender HDRI maps that already exist in all Blender uh, programs Sh and take this one. But I will also get you the file if you can't find it and search for mapping and for geometry. Perfect. Under mapping you can change now the values. I already did it before to get a good result and here because it's other way around I take also on the scale minus one. So in the next step we copy this one and here we insert a second HDRI map or in this case a colorful image and this is this one it get really cool color reflections later on on our object so go here under the folder file and insert it you get it also on my patreon search now for mix and connect this one here with b and here this one with a and connect it here together now we get already a really cool green color here we change to the blending mode multiply and we change to 0 0.4. We also only want to get a little bit green reflections on it. And here we change the background color to 2. We get a little bit green elements on it. It looks already really good, I would say. Now we go back to the object mode. And now we insert separately light. And for this, go on the light, point light. And the first light is here in this position here next to the cassette. These are my coordinates if you want the same spot. Now go here under this lightning tag, increase the power to 210 and the radius to 2.14 to get here a better lightning. Now you can copy and paste the light and change the coordinates to something like this. Now the light is here on this side. Now go also here under this tag. Here we changed 150 and the radius is perfect. And in the end we duplicate it again. And this light is directly behind our cassette. These are my coordinates. Go back in the camera view and here we change the radius to 6. So we get later on a backlight behind it, get the transparency, transparency better to see. All right, that's it for the light. Now select the background plane, create a new material, and here we change the color to black and the roughness to 0.33. Or maybe we leave it to 0.5. That looks already cool. Now we create the cassette material. Become a member on YouTube and get access to the member-only videos. And to all missing textures to finish this project. There you also get access to the secret color adjustment videos. Get this mesmerizing result only in a few minutes and free softwares. Become a pro now and bring your animations to the next level. Link is in the caption. Three reasons why you should follow me on my social media channels. One. There you can get exclusive shoutouts if you tag me at Art Invader. Two. There you can vote for upcoming projects. Three. Exclusive quick tips to get a pro in 3D. Thank you for your support, guys. And that's it. Well done, Art Invaders. If you like the video, please leave a like, follow or comment. And we see us in the next week.